Welcome to The Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. Hi, and welcome to The Laboratory video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. My name is Chanika Lokam, and today we'll be talking a bit about conversational AI for customer service. And uh, we'll also be showcasing a demo of how you can integrate live chat with Dialogflow. In today's video, we'll be covering a bit about what chatbots are. Uh, we'll also be talking about um, the live chat platform um, along with its integration into Dialogflow. Uh, we'll also be talking a bit about the use cases for conversational AI with customer service. After that, we'll talk a bit about the demo that we've built around agent escalation, order status, and other complex dialogues. Um, and at the end, we'll talk a bit about the overall architecture of how we built this demo as well. So let's get right into it. So what exactly is a chatbot? So a chatbot or a conversational chatbot is essentially a computer program that is able to respond back to users with automated messages. Uh, they're powered by natural language processing engines, which are AI-powered engines that are able to understand free flow text from users and able to convert that into intents. Uh, basically, what we mean by an intent is that if a user comes and says, what is my order status? The computer system or the bot behind the scene will understand that as an intent. And the intent in that case for the user is to find out their order status. So a user could come and say, what is my order status? Check order status. What is the status of my order number, so and so? And the bot will be able to understand that. Now, why are conversational chatbots becoming so popular? Um, in a lot of surveys, it's been shown that over 50% of people um, prefer to buy or interact with businesses that have some sort of messaging-based capability for them to get assistance, whether it's speaking with agents, bots, or anything else. So as we're seeing companies like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and others, messaging is really exploding in terms of its usage. Um, as a communication channel. So chatbots are kind of becoming the new user interface for businesses to interact with um, their end users, whether it's customers, employees, partners, or anybody else. Um, another very, very big impact that chatbots are having is the fact that they're, um, they provide gratification instantly, which means that when you're speaking with them at any time of the day, they give you a uniform instant message rather than you having to wait for an agent or somebody to come back and answer your question. So chat and messaging is really uh, exploding in terms of its usage, and chatbots, hence, are becoming a really, really big medium for businesses to leverage. So what exactly are the use cases for conversational AI in customer service? Well, before we talk about the actual use cases, let's talk a bit about why for customer service. Now, one of the biggest things that businesses want to do is enable their customers to get support 24-7. Now, this can be sometimes expensive if you're having to man a team of agents 24-7. So instead, your bot can be there around the clock, even when agents are not there on holidays, on weekends, and always be able to help your customers. Another important thing is that a lot of companies spend a lot of money to make sure that the messages that come to their customers are uniform. So whether it's a return policy or the status of an order, they want to make sure that customers can really get the same message, what the business is trying to relay back rather than getting custom messages from their agents. Also, omni-channel messaging is becoming very, very prominent. So you have to be able to speak with your customers on your website, through Facebook Messenger, through WhatsApp, through text messages, and so on. And chatbots can live in all of these different channels so that they can interact with your customers. And obviously, the ability to be able to speak with their customers in multiple languages and not just English is something that's powering conversational AI within customer service as well. So what are some use cases for customer service uh, using chatbots? It could be things like order status check, which have to bring information from the backend system, or things like searching for products, inventory check of products, store locations and timings, uh, but also some of the common FAQs, like being able to answer questions around warranties and returns, giving out pricing information, also talking about the policies of the company, um, and any other questions um, that users have or customers have when they're interacting with the business. But at the same time, you can also send proactive marketing messages and campaigns as well. So you could start a conversation with a customer about an upcoming offer or a coupon that they've been given. 
So in today's demo, we'll be talking about two main components. Number one is Live Chat, which is a agent management or a customer service platform. Um, it's a SaaS based platform that allows you to embed Live Chat on your website. They have a native widget that you can embed on their website. You can connect with channels like Facebook, text messaging and others. Um, but most importantly, they provide the mechanism for your customers to be able to speak with agents, be assigned to the right agents and be able to track the conversational history. Um, the other component that we'll be using in today's demo is Dialogflow. Um, Dialogflow is a product offering from Google, which provides conversational AI. So you can go ahead and create intents, entities, and much more, and kind of model your dialogue that the customers are going to have when they're interacting with a bot. So in this particular demo, we will be showcasing how you can integrate live chat, which is the customer service platform, with Dialogflow so that customers can come and not only speak with a chatbot on your website, but also be able to get back in information like order status and others, and also be able to escalate conversations over to agents. So without further ado, let's jump into the demo. So as you can see, I have a web page here where we have the um, live chat uh, widget, web widget, um, embedded on the web page. Um, we have a small pre-chat survey here where the user can basically enter their name, email, and other information. So I will go ahead and fill in my name here. Um, we have some predefined users that we have in the backend system for the order. So I'll go ahead and use test at test.com. And I can select if I'm an existing user um, or existing customer, or if this is the first time I'm shopping uh, with this company. Um, and depending on that, I'll be shown a custom menu uh, as, as I move forward in the chat. So I'm gonna go ahead with, I'm an existing customer. And I'll go ahead and say, start the chat. Um, so the first thing that you're going to see is that um, it introduces itself. The bot introduces itself. You're automatically assigned to the bot. And the bot responds back saying that, hey, how can I help you today? And from here onwards, we can go ahead and start speaking with the bot. So let's go ahead and start off with a couple of um, generic use cases like FAQs. So I want to go ahead and ask the bot, what is your return policy? And I can basically um, get back that any static message. So this is a static FAQ type of uh, message that we're talking about. So let's go a bit deeper and see um, how we can go into uh, more of a multi-turn kind of dialogue. So we'll try the store locator um, dialogue because it uses slot filling as well. Um, so in this particular case, there's two ways that I can do it. I can go ahead and say um, I am looking for store locations. I could put, put any text over here um, that is similar to that, and the bot will basically be able to understand that. Now we're using slot filling over here, which means that it has to have the city name to be able to get the um, store information for me. Um, another cool feature that we have um, in this bot is the ability to digress as well. So I can go ahead and say things like, never mind, and Dialogflow out of the box gives me this functionality where I can kind of come out of that flow um, where I was looking for store locations. Another way that I can see do this is I can ask the bot, what can you do? And the bot will actually prompt me with a message. So I have order status, I have store locator, I basically have a help menu that I can use. I'll go ahead and click on store locator. It'll again prompt me with a message, um, what city? And I'll go ahead and say, no buy. Um, and it'll be able to understand that, okay, Novi is a city, it understands GeoCities, and it's able to give me a carousel of all the stores that are there um, in Novi. So you can kind of go through those cards and kind of see that rich message functionality. Now, we also have entity extraction as well within Dialogflow. So I can go ahead and say, do you have any stores in, let's give a different city name, which we don't have in the system. So I'll go ahead and say, do you have any stores in Detroit? The bot is able to understand um, understand that Detroit is the uh, city that I'm looking for, and, and it will go ahead and say, I'm sorry, I was not able to find any stores in Detroit. So it's kind of smart in terms of being able to extract information like that from the initial message so that it doesn't have to prompt me for the city name um, again. So now that we've seen a couple of different use cases like checking out the store's return policy, looking for different store locations based on the city name and others, let's now deep dive into a bit more of a complex dialogue. So we'll go with the check order status dialog. So I'll go ahead and click on check order status. I right now um, in the pre-chat survey, I gave an email address um, of test at test.com, which basically has orders, orders in the backend system. So the system responds back saying that, hey, based on your email address, I was able to pull out these orders. Um, which order would you like the status for? 
Um, I can go ahead and give it any number that I want. And obviously, since this is an order that is not in the system, the bot will basically come ahead and respond back saying that, hey, looks like the order number is invalid. Would you like for me to connect you with an agent? If I say yes or yep or yay or any of those affirmative uh, messages, it'll basically connect me with an agent. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say no. I don't want to be connected to an agent at this point in time. Um, and I'll say all right. We'll go back and see what happens if we give it a valid order number. So I'll go ahead and click on check order status. And um, it'll say again, you have these orders, which order? I click on this. Basically, once I do that, it's going to again check in the back end. The back end has a dynamic response that it's giving back based on the order number and the order status saying that, hey, we received your order and it's going to be shipping out soon. We'll let you know once that happens and we'll give you the tracking information as well. We'll go ahead and give it a different message this time um, of my order. It could be anything. Um, and then the bot will again come back and say, hey, these are the orders that I found. Which one would you like? I'll go ahead and pick another one, which is one, two, three, five. And you can now see that the message response from the bot will be different because this order has already shipped. So it's basically saying the order has shipped. Here is your tracking ID and information. So now let me go ahead and showcase to you a bit more of a complex dialog uh, where it goes through a couple of uh, follow-up steps before it um, wraps up the conversation. So we'll go ahead and click on 1236. In this case, this order has already been shipped and should have been delivered to the user. So the bot is going to come ahead and say, hey, it looks like the order was supposed to be delivered on June 21st. Um, are you reaching out because the order has not yet been delivered? Um, in this case, if I say yes, the order has not been delivered, um, that's a, a large issue, so it'll escalate up to an agent. I'm going to go ahead and say, and say no, um, so, which basically means the order was delivered, um, but there might be something else wrong um, with the order. So in this case, the bot is going to go ahead and say, all right, glad to hear that it got delivered. Is there anything else that you need help with for the order? So if I do go ahead and say yes, basically the bot is going to say, I've given you as much information as I can. I'm going to escalate up to an agent from here. Or if I go ahead and say no, it'll basically say, glad to hear that um, and glad that I was able to help. And if you want to speak with an agent at any point in time about this order, you can always speak with an agent. So in this case, to showcase the agent transfer functionality, we'll again go back to check order status. We'll go ahead and click on 1236. And this time we'll say that, yes, the order did not get delivered. So in this case, was it delivered? We'll go ahead and say, nope, uh, or yes, it was not delivered. And in this case, the bot is basically going to say, I'm sorry, that has not been delivered on time. Let me connect you to an agent. And you can see, voila, it's been transferred over to an agent. So now an agent can take over and an agent can speak with the user. So from here onwards, can you help me? with my order. This will not go to the bot anymore. It's basically going to the agent and then the agent can respond back to us from the other side. So that's it for the demo. Let's dive back into the presentation for the architecture and more. So in this case, on the left-hand side, we have the customers who are interacting with the business on your website using live chats widget, um, as we saw in the demo. And as messages come from live chat from the customer, they're sent to a webhook that we've created behind the scenes. Now, by default, we've asked our bot, Peter, to make sure that it can be the primary receiver of all of the messages that come through the website. So the moment you go to the website, the first person that you'll speak to is always going to be Peter. But Peter can obviously always escalate over to an agent if needed. But as long as messages are being sent to the bot, Peter, um, we will receive those messages to our live chat webhook, which we've written in Node.js. The live chat webhook is basically the um, agent or the middleware that is intermediating between live chat and Dialogflow. So any message that you send to the webhook is then sent to Dialogflow. Dialogflow uses a combination of its own NLP and the fulfillment webhook using Node.js that we've written to be able to provide the right response back to the user, which the webhook that sends back to live chat. So if we take an example of the order status dialog, anytime a customer comes and says, check my order status, that message is sent over to the webhook. The webhook sends it over to Dialogflow. Dialogflow then will check what the next action has to be based on the user's input or message. And it'll be able to give back a response or pull data using the fulfillment webhook from a backend system like an order management system, and then be able to relay it back over to the front end. 
Once again, thank you for watching our video series, and for many more, visit our playlist on YouTube, The Laboratory Video Series. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Laboratory, a video series brought to you by Miracles Innovation Labs. For more on innovation, please visit miraclesoft.com slash dlabs.